Cursing Holmes. What about Grandma? Tonight at 6. Now, live from the studios of 1290 WHIO, your chance to take part in the Miami Valley's only midday radio talk forum. 1290 WHIO and Television 7 proudly present this simulcast segment of the Mike Sinto Show. Neil, 40 years is a long time to, uh, for anything to be in operation of a television station, though. 40 years on the 23rd of February. That's right. WHIO-TV. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you, Mike. You know, and I've, I've got to tell you, sitting here and watching this setup uh, uh, on this simulcast, how everything comes around. Uh, simulcasts aren't new, mm -hmm. but yet they haven't been done, uh, I don't believe, in probably 20 years uh, since I've been in this marketplace. When television first started, and I remember well uh, standing in, in, uh, on, a, on a sidewalk and watching uh, a, a baseball game, mm -hmm. uh, I was then living outside of New York. Uh, I was probably watching the New York Giants or the Brooklyn Dodgers. Uh, and those games initially were simulcast. They were on radio, and uh, and you were getting this marvelous picture mm -hmm. uh, coming coming through. This is well, exciting stuff. This is exciting right. stuff. I'm That's loving right. it. Um, and we'll we'll encourage folks if they'd like to call up and and share their memories of WHIO TV, uh, which has been on the air for 40 years now. Please feel free to do so. And a quick reminder that uh, you'll see clips of uh, various clips throughout the show today and on March 6th. Uh, Monday, Monday night, March, March 6th. 6th at right. 8 o'clock. Uh, a right. uh, uh, 40th anniversary tribute uh, to WHIO. What, uh, what are some of the most drastic things you've seen change? You've been here since 1970. 70. Yeah. yeah. What are some of the, the, the things you've seen change? Well, as, as we mentioned in the previous uh, segment, I, I suppose... Uh, pops right in my head going from film to tape mm -hmm. uh, computerization uh, satellite transmission mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, long lines yeah M miracle we when we talked about the satellite you mentioned you were uh, you were up there when the first satellite transmission in, came the, in. in the in the control room and I I, uh, I I'm assuming maybe it maybe there was an earlier satellite transmission but uh, uh, when when that came through when you realized uh, the the uh, show was coming from Los Angeles uh, and it was originating there and being bounced off a satellite floating around somewhere in space and we oriented our first uh, seven meter dish to that satellite and that picture just came into our control room beautifully it's uh, yeah. it's like some of the things are almost and you're in the business uh, and and I'm I'm a newcomer to this side of the business some of the things are almost miraculous how they come off, aren't they? Well, you know, and, and uh, uh, I, I didn't know the process or how it was all yeah. done. I know a little bit more uh, uh, over the years. But, but kinescopes, which were really just pictures uh, uh, put on film uh, taken off of a television screen. And that's the way, initially, uh, this station got its CBS programming. Uh, we'd often be a week or two weeks behind what was on the network because uh, they would take a picture of a, of, a, of a show, an early show, and then mail it to us, and then we'd put it on the air. Do you remember a show, you were in New York as a regional rep uh, salesman right. before you came here. Do you remember a show called Your Evening Theater? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ted Ryan, who's been here how long? 102 years. 102 years. years. Right. And Joe Rockhold. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is Ted Ryan and Joe Rockhold doing a promo for Your Evening Theater. We're trying to stop someone to find out just what is happening. Here comes the distinguished Southern Senator right now. Let's see if we can stop Senator hey, Gray Hare. Senator Gray Hare, yes, would you yes, please sir. tell us what's happening? What's all the excitement about, sir? Never in all my 40 years in the Senate have I ever seen anything to equal the excitement that's yes, going on right but, now. But, the whole Senate's recessed. I, well, I'm sorry, Senator, son. I can't answer any questions. I'm awful sorry, but I've got to be away. But, Senator, please tell us why the excitement. What's happening? Why? Why they've recessed the Congress? Because we're all going to meet. We're all going to meet, and every one of us are going to see Ignaz Hammerslav open the evening theater. Goodbye, son. I'll see you later. And he hasn't changed a bit, has he? Boy, there's some nostalgia. I'll tell you. He was 11 when he did 11 years old when he did it. <laughs> you can talk to Neil Pugh and share some of your thoughts and ideas as the Mike Sento Show continues on 1290 WHIL Radio and Television 7, and here's how you do it. <laughs> You can take part in the Mike Sinto Show by calling 457-1290 or toll-free anywhere in Ohio, 1-800-345-1290.
go to the phones for Neil Pugh, Vice President, General Manager of WHIO TV, celebrating 40 years. Uh, hello, bud. How you doing? Fantastic. I got a question for Neil. All right. Neil, back in the uh, 50s, this was before you came on the program, you were talking about Joe Rockhold and, and people like that. My father used to have a program on WHIO. Um, it was called Trail Hands. Uh, they had a Sunday morning program there. They were right after Kenny Roberts had his program there. That's been just a few years, I realize. And then he went from there, you know, different places like Midwestern Hayride and things like that. And I was, I was wanting to ask a question, Neil. Um, sometimes you've got the old, the old tapes, you know, the programs. Do you have tapes that go back that far? Yes. I'd sure like to get a hold of some of them. And, uh... Uh, I, uh, contact me, and we'll go on a search. I've, I've got to be honest, and we're not like uh, a lot of television stations. Uh, our our library uh, librarying system leaves a lot to be desired. But uh, there are people uh, at this station, Chuck Up the Grove being one, that uh, has has devoted a lot of time to trying to catalog uh, those those old. Kinescopes, yeah, uh, uh, and and uh, we we can locate a lot of them. Yeah, I think those were called kinescopes back then. That's right. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I urge you to watch on um, uh, March sixth uh, at eight o'clock because uh, you might see some things that'll uh, trigger your mind uh, that you you'd even forgotten about. Uh, what I'd like to do is, if I can, get some old ones, make some tapes off of them. Sure. Uh, so so uh, uh, contact me. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Right. Uh, if you have a question, comment, or a thought, please feel free to give us a call at 457-1290 or toll-free 1-800-345-1290. Uh, we talked during the radio segment, and I wanted to bring it up again now, about uh, where we're going from here. Uh, you know, at this point, we talked about the tape and the, the satellites and the first ones. Where are we going from here as yeah, we I head think, into the 90s? Sure. I think, I think probably as we get into the 90s, uh, what you're going to see, and some of you may have read about it, uh, it goes under the nomenclature of HDTV, which is High Definition Television. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, what that's going to do is is uh, give you a better uh, picture uh, coming out of your set. Uh, your reds are going to be redder. Your uh, greens are going to be greener. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, th there's going to be uh, a change in the way we transmit, and there's going to be uh, a little change in the way you receive. What, what the government has charged the industry with is that... Uh, uh, whatever system we end up with in this country, it has to be compatible with the uh, millions of sets, receivers, that are that are now out there in all of your homes. How many uh, new car advertisements do you see a day on, on, on television? <laughs> Not enough. Not enough? Let's take a look at one from 1957. The 1957 Chevrolet. Some are looking at Chevrolet's daring new front-end styling. The bold new grille. Everyone's enthused about the new color-fashioned interiors and the sleek command post instrument panel. And the biggest news of all, Chevrolet's fuel injection. The greatest engine advanced since the overhead valve. Plus, four famous drives topped by new exclusive turbo glide that brings you triple turbine takeoff and a new flowing kind of going. So visit your Chevrolet dealers soon. See the car that goes them all one better. Number one in the USA, the 57 Chevrolet. Well, it's a classic today. It was a classic then and a classic That's today. Uh, we want to thank to Bill Welker, a producer who's producing the 40th anniversary show, as well as uh, he's the gentleman who gave us these clips and uh, did a, a fine job. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm reminded, looking at that uh, really fine commercial, how, how our commercial end of this business has changed, where you, you're looking at the inside of uh, the engine. Mm -hmm. How many commercials today and automobiles do you look at the inside of the engine who cares about the inside of the now, engine? usually there's a <laughs> model model sitting on the hood of the car so you can't see inside <laughs> the engine today uh four five seven twelve ninety one eight hundred three four five twelve ninety on the mike cento show on twelve ninety whio in fact uh tell you what we're going to do we are going to take another break and take care of some business and then when we come back we'll take some more calls as well as introduce you to somebody special who uh is going to be leaving WHIO TV and share with you some of the things they've been involved in as the Mike Sento show continues on 1290 WHIO radio and television 7. We go to the phones uh, for Neil Pugh, Vice President General Manager of WHIO Television. We say hello to Lou from Fairborn. Hi. Hi. Yes. Uh, Neil, I don't want to put you on the spot, but 
<laughs> that grin tells me, you're, you, what's it going to do to me? I'm, I, I'm not an engineer, but I'll do my best. But now that really, uh, when I started in broadcasting, radio broadcasting back in 47 and went full-time in uh, 55, one of the things that we as radio broadcasters dealt with was the onslaught of, and that's about the way it worked, was an onslaught of television. Television's facing uh, something new now, television as we know it, uh, that is the local transmitter. Uh, direct broadcast satellites, what kind of impact is that going to have on uh, local television as we know it or on the distribution of network programming directly to the home? Right now, I don't think it's going to have uh, a great deal. Uh, uh, you know, as, as we get on to the 90s, maybe by the turn of the century, uh, the whole distribution system uh, uh, could change. Uh, right now, they're, they're in the industry, there seems to be uh, a great feeling to keep the distribution system as it is, which is why, uh, and, and if you're a dish owner, you're probably aware the scrambling is going on. Uh, which I think is going to have the effect, whether we like it or not, of, of, of retarding uh, the uh, distribution, at least, of network programming uh, uh, by uh, direct home satellite. I'm not talking about the uh, satellite dish as we know it today. I'm talking about the, the new satellites, the new birds that are going up to broadcast directly to the home, home. one-foot dish, the high-power Right. Uh, jobs. All right, and uh, uh, so I, I, I just reiterate, I, I think that there, uh, right now, there, there is a movement to keep the distribution systems, at least as far as the network stations are concerned, uh, as it is. Uh, if uh, your, your, your small dish and your direct home dish that you're talking about changes that, uh, I think it'll happen uh, sometime toward the turn of the century. Hi, Kevin, you had a quick, uh, quick comment for us. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I watched the television program the other day where they was talking about that HD television and the waves that they're going to be sending, how they're going to interfere with other waves from radio stations and so forth. And I was wondering, they said the FCC was going to have to regulate this. Is it going to have to make us cut off different radio stations and television stations and so forth? That, uh, the FCC is very much aware of that, and I've got to say the FCC is aware of that because broadcasters made the FCC aware of that. Uh, and uh, they are the, uh, the FCC will really see that that does not happen. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Now, I want you to take a minute, if you would, before we uh, take a trip upstairs to where this whole thing is put together. All right. Uh, tell us about a gentleman by the name of Lynn German. Well, you know, uh, let me just kind of preface that a little bit. In the in the in in the person, uh, the persona of, of this very exceptional gentleman, Mr. Led Ger Len German, uh, is is embodied uh, a a technical mind, and there are other technical minds around uh, in our business, uh, and and I'm reminded, Mike, that uh, without these kind of people, without the Len Germans, management. Uh, media personalities like yourself, uh, the the uh, Rathers, the Baldridges, the Countesses, uh, McHenrys, and your theatrical people like Lucille Ball and Skelton and Mary Tyler Moore and Candace Bergen. None of us are really anything unless we get a picture out there. And it's the Len Germans that, uh, that uh, get the pictures out there. Uh, this this individual and, uh, and it's it's somewhat of a rarity because he's been with one broadcaster his entire career. He's been with one broadcaster uh, the entire time that we've had television for 40 years. So here's a guy that has seen it all. Okay, let's and let's take a look back at some of the things. Uh, this now this is this is Len German a couple of years ago. Okay. usual to see an engineer like Len German here checking one of the amplifying panels. That device he's using is called an oscilloscope. He uses it to make sure the picture level is right. And here he is today, Neil. 
Lynn German. Hello, Lynn. How are you? Good morning. I'm just fine. Thank you. You haven't changed a bit. He hasn't changed, has he, Neil? Well, that uh, shot you saw there was actor portrayed. <laughs> yeah, sure it was. Uh huh. What was that? That was last year, wasn't it, Lynn? Two years ago. Uh, two years ago, actually. Neil, say something to this young man. Well, I've just got to tell you, I mean, looking at you now, Lynn, you know, you, you could go into the anchor business. You really look good. I'm ready. I'll be ready in two days. <laughs> you're gonna you're ha gonna hang it up, huh? Yeah, that's it. I'm gonna hang it up. Do you have mixed emotions about it? Are you gonna, I mean, you, you are a gentleman and, uh, you know, I have not worked with you directly that long. I've, we've been doing the TV show now. We did it uh, last year for three weeks, and uh, this year, starting in uh, the end of January, and uh, I'll tell you, I, I have yet to see many people in any business as dedicated as you are to what you do, and I, and I mean that sincerely. Oh, thanks. I've really enjoyed this. Uh, it's a new thing that we're trying, and uh, it's very unique in the business, and uh, we hear from people all around the country, and uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. All right, I tell you, let's, um, if we could, I'm going to take a look. What is that thing you're holding there? This is a four and a half inch uh, image orthicon. Uh, back in the late 50s and early 60s, this was the state of the art pickup tube that we used in the black and white camera. And you can see the, the size of that. Now, here is a tube that we use today in our small E and G cameras. So you can see the difference what we got here. Wow. It's a tremendous difference that the changes that have been made. I got one more little tube here that this is a picture tube like you would use in your television set only this is what they use in the little cameras. To, it's a one eye job you know. Hmm. It's, it's just the kind of cameras that you're seeing that are uh, uh, that are taking your picture right now uh, Len and the kind of cameras that are taking my picture and Mike's picture in the radio studio. Uh, uh, now, are we in? Is that master control where you are right now, Len? Yeah, this is master control. This Why don't you? Yeah, give us a, a quick little rundown of what me, goes on there. And in just a minute, when you get done with that, we're going to show people what it looked like a few years ago too. Well, this is where it all happens. Everything that goes on the air goes through uh, master control here. We either operate it uh, through computer. It's either on real time, or we can manually operate it. And uh, everything that happens go, comes eventually goes through here. Even when we do live newscasts, the live newscast go, comes through uh, the production booth, but it goes through here before it leaves and heads for the transmitter. And uh, uh, today, even the newscast, half of it's on tape, and uh, probably 95% of everything you see on the air is on tape. And when you consider that we operated this station for 13 years without videotape, you can imagine what a challenge we had in those first 13 years. Now those seats, those seats always have to be manned, right? Yes, there has to be somebody here all the time uh, at Master Control, and we're on the air 24 hours a day. So the Master Control operator here through the night has control of the transmitter, which sets out in Germantown, my remote control, and uh, everything else in this area. Oh. One, we have a one-person operation from 2.30 to 6.30 each, day, each morning. Well, Len, I tell you what, let's take a look at what uh, Master Control looked like, uh, say, about oh, 30 years ago or so. You're in Master Control right now. That's Tom Holland on duty. He's seated at the console. That's the master mixing point for all you see on television. He controls the shading and the bright picture you see. He must mix and blend the pictures from the studio cameras or the network, the film cameras or slide projectors. Now, he checks with Kenny Weller to make sure everything is ready for what we call the next take. In other words, the director is calling for a change coming up. They're getting ready. All right, and uh, when we come back, Lynn is going to take us uh, through operations. We're going to take a tour of operations and uh, find out exactly what goes on in there as the Mike Sento Show continues on 1290 WHIL Radio and Television 7. All right, uh, Lynn is uh, Lynn German is standing by. He's going to take us on a quick tour of operations. Which, by the way, this is something that not everybody gets to see. Everybody doesn't get a tour of this. Uh, that's right. This is basically a pretty much of a restricted area. Uh, seems like we got a little feedback problem, but we'll work on that. Uh, this is a, uh, where everything happens today. It's unbelievable if you were seeing all the things that we do back here in the course of a day. We have uh, half-inch machines, we have three-quarter machines, and we have 
uh, four one-inch machines here. Now those are those are the sizes of the videotape, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, that's what designates it. And you can see the size of the one-inch machines to the right, and they are about uh, a third of the size of the two-inch machines that we used to have. Now, if you pan over to the left, you see the difference in size, even today, from the one-inch machines, how much smaller they've gotten to the three-quarter machines. Um, the three-quarter there, and then the half-inch machines. 